When we talk about consonants and dissonance in music, we can be referring to a number of things based on context. And one of those contexts is how the music is notated. A perfectly fine consonant like a minor sixth becomes a dissonance when respelled as an augmented fifth. In systems where these are the same interval, of course, they certainly are on the piano. While you can have dissonances that sound like consonances, you have to look at the context how the composer is using them. Chances are that the composer is using it in a moment of tension that then resolves to something else. The most audacious example of this that I know of is when Robert Schumann decided to put a B natural up against a C flat in the 12th song of his Opus 48 song cycle Dichtliebe. Yes, this is a diminished ninth, and yes, there is a pretty good reason for it. It looks pretty wild because he's putting sharps in the piano against flats in the voice, but the whole system of music is one of those things that just gets weirder the more you look at it. Because this sounds like an octave, but it resolves to a seventh, a dissonance that both looks, sounds, and operates as one. Something to keep in mind here is that the song is in B-flat, so Schumann is playing with different ways of destabilizing the tonic in this passage, as an inharmonic third, and then later as the seventh of a 5 7 to 5 Let's just take a look at the piano part alone for a second. We start on M1 before moving to 5 7 of sharp 1, but instead of B major, it's another dominant sonority, implying that we're either about to go to E major, a tritone away from our home key of B-flat, or it'll get reinterpreted as some weird German augmented sixth, then we'll end up in E flat, which would be four of the home key. Turns out we're in for an even weirder resolution, because Schumann takes us up a half step to 5 7 to 5, which then will take us back around the circle of fifths to B flat major by the end of the phrase. So, what's going on here? This is one of the strangest looking passages of tonal music I've ever seen, and I couldn't find any existing analysis that looked at it in the gory detail that I crave. Even respected Schumann scholars didn't have a good answer. Eric Sam's book on Schumann's songs relegates discussion of this passage in a footnote, where he says that it would have been easier to notate the piano part in flats, and the inharmonic move to sharps is a form of brightening that illustrates the magical nature of the text that's being sung at that very moment. Rufus Hallmark, another respected Schumann scholar, looked at Schumann's sketches and noted that he did just that in the sketches, G flat instead of F sharp. So the alteration here was late in the composition process. One wonders, he wrote, why he did not also notate the vocal line inharmonically at this point. Jeffrey Moon's analysis analyzes this passage simultaneously in both B flat and E. It's a testament to the sheer harmonic weirdness of this passage that you can look at it from two lenses, a tritone apart, and it makes sense in either one. None of these analyses satisfactorily explained Schumann's spelling choices. After a deep dive, I think I figured it out. If we look at the song as a whole, there are a ton of augmented sixths, and Schumann lived in an era where pieces would have some characteristic thing on the surface level, which will also permeate the structure of the music as well. Remember that Schumann is destabilizing the B-flat in this passage by putting this tone, which should be very stable, into very unstable positions in the chords. And even though there's not an augmented sixth in this passage, we have this buckwild voice leading and some implied parallel motion that's a little reminiscent of how augmented sixths tend to operate. We can only get a sense of Schumann's harmonic thinking if we take the voice into account. But that exists in a whole parallel universe up here. B flat changes inharmonically to A sharp while the voice stays on B flat. So we have a diminished second followed by a doubly diminished octave. And by the time we get to that diminished ninth, it's certifiably cursed music theory content. Should have done this episode near Halloween. So he writes an octave that sounds like a minor seventh and then a ninth that sounds like an octave. First question. Why did Schumann choose to mix flats and sharps like this? 
one theory is to go hunting for context clues, like C sharps and flats colliding in, say, the first measure, and you can speculate that this might somehow be connected. Sharps are designed to resolve up, and flats designed to resolve down. And sure enough, the accidentals in the opening augmented sixth do just that. But this doesn't explain why Schumann mixed them up here. He's not afraid of inharmonic spellings. So what happens if we switch to sharps in the second half of measure eight? The passage makes more sense now, so maybe Schumann thought staying in flats would just be easier on the singer? I don't buy that. I, I just don't think that's true which is why I want to zoom in on this diminished ninth. Doing it Schumann's way preserves the contrary motion of B to C in the bass and C flat to B flat in the voice. He wants to visually preserve the contrary motion and interplay of accidentals with which he started the piece. That can only happen here by presenting an octave as a diminished ninth because the same problem would occur if Schumann had kept the piano part entirely in flats. Plus, nobody likes to read a dominant ninth chord on C flat. Be kind to your accompanists, people. They suffer enough already. I mentioned the augmented sixth because the voice leading is a little like a bizarro augmented sixth. If we look at the anatomy of an augmented sixth, the chord gets its name from an expanded sixth that resolves out to an octave. This is the inverse. It's resolving into a seventh from a compressed ninth. In both cases, we have to spell the first interval in an unusual inharmonic way to preserve visually the contrary motion that we hear orally. Schumann could have just inverted this and taken an octave into an augmented sixth, but when you're dealing with unusual spellings, the goal of the progression should be as normal and as easy to read as possible. Hence, diminished ninth. <laughs> 